staying safe. Uh, I bring you Akusa Goosby, who is an outreach coordinator for Elevate Energy. She's our presenter today. Uh, she works with Chicago South Side and South Suburban communities. Akusa spends her time educating and advocating for members of the community who have the least opportunity for access to utility rights. Those are underserved people who are CCLF's target population. So Ms. Goosby, we're all yours. Take it away. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that introduction. Um, I don't know how well you guys can hear me, but just in case I'm gonna put my headphones in. So yeah. we can hear you. Volume is acts funny on my computer. Okay. Um, so thanks again for having me. Me, Taft and Pamela. Uh, this is my second presentation for you guys, actually third. Third. Um, and I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I have a few like new things that um, may be exciting for your viewers, uh, but I'm just gonna get started by sharing my screen. I'm gonna get, get right into it. Um, okay. So uh, I, as um, Taft said, uh, I work for Elevate. We're actually dropping the energy portion of our, of our name um, starting in 2021, uh, just to reflect that we are so much more than a, a, a energy or a utility um, uh, company or a nonprofit. We, we really focus focus on helping communities in all aspects of um, efficiency and all um, environmental aspects of um, the Chicago area. One, one such area that we've uh, ventured out into and that we've had great success and we love helping in is um, the land and water issue that we have in Illinois. Um, what we do is uh, right now, our program is is concentrated on helping um, home daycares make sure that they don't have lead in their water, uh, and we hope to expand expand that further. Uh, another area was when we, when the quarantine first started, a lot of people um, had water shutoffs, and we were helping the city of um, Chicago and and the state of Illinois really um, identify water shutoffs in different communities. Um, so that they could uh, restore water to those those areas. But for now, we are still Elevate Energy um, and um, our tagline is smarter energy use for all. Um, that just means that we give people the resources they need to make informed energy choices. And I believe that um, going forward, I personally will continue to focus on energy because I believe that that's a a really big area for um, Illinois, especially Chicago. Um, it's kind of a blind spot and, and I'll explain a little further in my presentation um, how energy, our energy works in Illinois and Chicago and a lot of people may not know that in Chicago, um, our energy situ situation is unique to that of other, um, well, in Illinois, unique to that of other states. I personally didn't know that until I worked here. I thought it was like that everywhere, but we'll talk about that a little further. Um, this is just a, a little overview. Like we've been um, around for 20 years. It's our 20 year anniversary. Um, we're a nonprofit and we're, we're established in 2000. And we started off as the center of neighborhood technology and we're primarily funded by, our work is primarily funded by ICEF, the, um, the Illinois Science Engineer Innovation Foundation. And what we do at Elevate is we design and implement, well, one of the many things we do is design and implement energy efficiency programs, but um, that help to cut costs, protect the environment and ensure the benefits of energy efficiency reach all people. And so in that, I like to discuss how our energy is, um, how we get, how we receive energy um, and how it can be in, how the inequities occur in energy distribution. So one of the main differences between um, Illinois and uh, there are probably a few other states like Illinois is that um, from other states is that we have that um, we have one 
energy company that has a monopoly on delivery of energy and that company is Comet. And with any monopoly, there's always going to be an issue and um, there's always going to be lobbyists and there's always going to be organizations like ours who are advocating for a dismantling or a dis, um, a, a, a destructuring of, a, of an organization or a company that has a monopoly. Right now, I know that there's a big push to get Facebook in particular to, to, um, to let go of its monopoly on the, the internet sector. And so um, in that same vein, ComEd has taken advantage of the fact that they, are, they have a monopoly over our energy delivery. So one good thing um, that happened a few years ago is that um, we opened up the supply of energy. Now we, we didn't open up the delivery of energy, but we opened up the supply of energy because originally ComEd not only delivered, but also supplied all the energy to everyone in Chicago. And so with supplier, what suppliers, what we call retail electric suppliers, um, also known as alternative suppliers, alternative energy suppliers, the good thing about opening up and de-monopolizing um, um, the supply is that it created um, a, a supply and demand structure that forced Comet to be more competitive with their pricing. Because if you're the only one, you set the price and the price is the price and that's it and everybody pays it. So now there are three ways that you can get your energy supply. So there, you can get your energy still through Comet, the electric utility, you can get your energy energy through a retail electric supplier that's also known as an alternative supplier those might be the people that are set up in walmart i've seen them in the gym i've seen them on the corner and they just tell you about how they can save you so much money on your energy and how you need to just leave comment but we'll talk about why that is not always the case and then if you live in a municipal aggregate you um or a municipality i should say your local government might have negotiated a price with one of those alternative suppliers on behalf of all the residents who live there. So you might not even have a choice or have had a say in um, the, the supplier that you have also could be an issue. So let's just start off by talking about how one finds out if they have an alternative supplier because they get that a lot. People are like, oh, I definitely don't have an alternative supplier because my bill is from comment. Well, everyone's bill is from Comet. That's going to be the default. Everyone gets their bills from Comet. The difference is going to be your supplier. So um, if you can see the green highlighted area, that's where you find out who the supplier is and how much they're charging you to be supplied. They might even put the rate down there. And a lot of times what they'll say is, let's say um, Comet's rate for energy is six cents per kilowatt hour. They'll say something like, I can give you energy for three cents per kilowatt hour you are getting hammered by comment, you should switch. And you say, that's half, I'm definitely switching. So you switch to comment, you're I mean, you switch to an alternative supplier, you're excited about it, your bill is lower. Six months later, bam, it goes up to 17 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's an extreme number, but it's not uncommon. And so now your bill is $400 a month. And originally it was, let's say $87 a month. And you don't know why. So you would call a company like a, a business, uh, a nonprofit like Elevate or a nonprofit like um, Citizens Utility Board, and they would. Um, the Citizens Utility Board is a is a utility watchdog. So their specific goals and mission is to make sure that Comet is not taking advantage of consumers. So you would call them. They would help you get out of that. And before last year you would more, more than likely have to pay a fee to get out of those contracts. That fee could be a hundred up to a hundred dollars to get out of your contract with this company. Um, and they could make it so that it, it could be a few months before, before you see a difference in your bill, they'll still be charging you. Um, but now they can't charge you to get out from underneath their bill. So that's a good thing too. Um, this is just, I'm just gonna talk here because this is just an illustration. Uh, I want to talk to you about some changes that have been made to energy uh, in the past hundred years. So uh, what we see in these pictures is how energy has always been distributed to us. We've, um, we know that those, th there are men that, that climb up poles and they do work and they make sure that our energy is um, getting to us. 
um, this one uh, one man, I forgot what these people are called. I, that really bothers me, but he does this work and he was talking about how dangerous it is and how many people die um, per wow. year in this line of business climbing up these really tall poles. And they're, 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 this job is not obsolete so much as it has diminished and we're going to talk about why and we're going to talk about um what was put in place that allowed us to move from um the archaic system of how we got energy to how we are now so everything is smarter now our phones are smarter our lighting system has gotten smarter even our cars are smarter now um but our energy was the same up until a few years ago the the picture on the left just shows um, how energy has always been distributed to us and back in the time of Edison. And then a modern day picture shows that those lines and wires are essentially the exact same ones that we've always known um, to be there. So we call that the old grid. Um, this is an illustration that my coworker made. She's an artist and it just shows um, how a lot of people might think, we, we, we typically might say, oh, our, our light bill and it might like connect with us that this is a bill that that we get because of our lights. However, energy is so much more than lights. It's, it's everything. It's your cell phone. It's your coffee pot. It's your um, electric outlets. It's literally everything. Um, if it ain't gas, it's electric. You know. So uh, this is how the old grid worked. So the old grid um, had no way of communi. We had no way of communicating. This illustrates how our buildings and our towers had no way of communicating back to ComEd how much energy we were being, we were using. So you may have, you may remember that back in the day, um, our bills were, we might get an estimated bill every couple of months. And that estimated bill was just because ComEd hadn't sent a meter reader out to read your meter and find out how much energy you had actually used. So you could potentially be spending or um, yeah, you could be char overcharged for your energy that month because they don't know how much energy you use. Now we've moved to what we call the smart grid. So it's from the old grid to the smart grid. The smart grid was de developed by some scientists in IIT, the Illinois Institute of Technology. And originally they had um, tested it out on their, their campus and they had the grid. It runs underneath the system, like underneath the ground and it communicates back to ComEd how much energy is being used. And that's, really great for a number of reasons. I'm gonna just highlight a couple. Um, one of the reasons is we used to have brownouts and blackouts and we could be in the dark for days and we wouldn't know when, how long we'd be in the dark. Not only that, but let's say when, when we're in the dark and our, our power is out, it's because there's a down wire um, in the back of our yard. So there's a down wire somewhere. So somebody has to literally drive around and find this down wire in, in your neighborhood. This down wire could be live. No, it more than likely is live. It could be in water. Kids could be playing. They could get electrocuted. These are things that actually would happen with the old grid. So with the smart grid, now there's a two-way line of communication between your home or buildings um, and the and ComEd, so we no longer have the use for a meter reader. And I actually have right here um, a new grid, a new um, power meter, a new power, a new smart meter. So this is the new smart meter. And um, on the left hand side, you see the old smart, the old meter. It's not, it's not smart. The old meter and. Um, you might not have even noticed that there was a difference, but now you know there's a digital reader and it, it transmits straight back to your to comment and tells them exactly how much energy you're using. It lets the comment know if you have a outage and where exactly where to locate that outage. So you're in the dark or way less than we used to be. Um it's also brought to us by ISIF. So ISIF funds our funds the work to get the word out. The fact that the smart grid powers um, all of our, all of our needs and that they were responsible for making sure that literally every home in Illinois has a smart grid now. So cool thing about the smart grid. Um, well, one of the cool things about the smart grid, and but I guess another cool thing about the smart grid, cause I've already labeled a couple. So another cool thing about the smart grid is that, um, ComEd was able to, um, 
they were able to start to give us savings based on the data that they were receiving from the smart grid. And those savings programs we call dynamic pricing programs. So I like to ask people um, just moving forward, and I should make this a poll, but I, I haven't yet. But I like to ask people what time of day do they think we all use energy or electricity at the same time? Anybody have any ideas? Anybody want to throw anything out there? Like there's a morning, the afternoon, and the evening. What time of day would you say that we use energy collectively, the majority of us? Oh, there's something in chat. Seven and nine. Okay. That's a great answer. Um, five o'clock. That's also a great answer. And it makes sense because that's when we typically all use our energy. So I come home, I do a lot of laundry. I wash dishes. I get, I might take a shower. I wake up in the morning. I take a shower. That's energy. I take a shower. I wash dishes. I do a lot of laundry. The good thing is six o'clock, those are all good answers. The good news is those, that's not the right answer. The why is that good? It's good because the majority of us, when we were able to leave our homes, we're not home when the majority of people are using energy. So when we think about how, when we use energy and when everybody else is using energy, we're not using enough for it to really stress the grid. The grid becomes stressed out when uh, businesses are using energy and those businesses are using energy during business hours. So it's actually around between the time of about two to seven. So I guess someone were right. So around two to seven, I would say like definitely between like one and five, that is when energy, the, the grid is really being taxed. And that's when we don't want to use energy. So Another good new good thing about energy is it goes in peaks and valleys. Um, so it's expensive for consumers when we hit those peaks, but uh, and it's also harmful for the environment. But then it levels out. The good news is that it levels out, and if we use our energy at those level times, so in the morning and the evening, instead of when it peaks in the afternoon, we're saving the environment and we're saving money. The um, the bad news is. Comet automatically charges us a fixed rate of about six cents per kilowatt hour. So they're saying, yes, I know that you can serve energy, but your neighbor uses so much energy at all times a day that we're just gonna charge you both the same price just to recoup any losses that we may have gotten from your, 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 um, your neighbor's usage. And so just it levels out and we don't lose any which, whichever way we go. So the great news is that they have come up with what we call dynamic pricing programs that we can all get on for free. And I'm actually gonna show you guys right now a quick little video. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, this is what I just explained. So right now um, we, we charge, comment charges of six cents per kilowatt hour, but they've come up with what we call um, hourly pricing. And hourly pricing says that when um, energy, the price of energy changes hour by hour. So it's cheaper in the morning, it's cheaper at night, and it's actually cheaper on the weekends too, which is great news for us as well, because we really could get a lot of our um, energy use in, in the, on the weekends. Um, this here is a grid uh, that shows um, hourly pricing and how it works like in real time. So if you're one of those people like me and you think it's fun to just see how much energy costs at any time of day, you can literally go to Google and Google Comet hourly pricing program and the chart will come up. And this chart is live and the red um, line shows you how much energy costs at that time of day for that specific day. And the blue line is how much energy is projected to cost. Now, remember we said energy costs is a fixed rate at six cents per kilowatt hour. But if you see on this grid, even the peak of energy for the following day barely reaches over three cents. So that's half the price of what we're paying for energy. And if you see this date is recent, this was November 5th, 2020. I just pulled this data and I could have pulled it this morning and put a new chart, which is something I used to do when we were in the real world, or I would show you my computer and I would like pull up what energy costs at right then at that time. 
But this is a, a fair assessment, especially in the winter time. We never really reached that six cents per kilowatt hour. So everyone could be saving money, especially now that we're sitting at home um, and we're not leaving the house. If we're just more mindful, like right now my heat is on, but if around, if like in an hour I turn my heat off for a few hours, I could save potentially because I'm on hourly pricing. So here's the video. This is where I put it. I'm just gonna play this quick video for you. It's a, only a couple of minutes and it just explains further that the um, time of day pricing. Let me know if you can hear it. It's down pretty low. What was that, Taff? The volume is pretty low. Oh, it's low? Okay, let me turn it up. Let me see if I can turn it up. There you go. Okay. Is that better? No. Mm -mm, still pretty low. It's still low? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about for anybody else. I have on headphones, so I can hear it really well. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody? Yeah, Tiffany says she can't hear it. She can't hear it at all? Mm -mm. So it's okay. pretty low. Let's see. Um, Sylvia Taylor says she can't hear it. Uh-oh, let's see, settings, subtitles off. Should I turn the subtitles on, we can read it? Or maybe, let me just restart it and see if that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is it? 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Still low? Yeah, still low. It's still low. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm gonna open it up. On, okay. Um, I'm just gonna open a video on. Um, let's see. I'm gonna stop sharing my video. Open it on YouTube for you guys. Okay, that'll probably work. Yeah, that should do mm -hmm. the trick. Okay. Full screen. Sorry about that, guys. It's all right. It's Christmas time. We're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to figure out. You guys can't see my screen, right? Not yet. No, okay. Not yet. Okay. I figure out how I can. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let me share my screen again. Awesome. There you go. Awesome. Okay. Okay. All Let's right. Over. Try this new rodeo. Let's see if we can hear it right now. Okay. You can save money by shifting your energy to the ComEd new time of day pricing rate. A little bit better. Broken into three pricing periods. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. are off peak hours. Peak hours occur twice daily. Again, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Super peak hours are from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. This is when energy is most in demand. This time of day pricing is lower than the common fixed price. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat because everybody was saying they couldn't hear it. Right. <laughs> um, I took my headphones out. I was wondering if that worked. 
and I turn my volume on my computer all the way up. So hopefully, H2. Okay. All right. Hope you guys can hear it. No, we don't hear anything, Akusa. <laughs> um, yeah, so you guys couldn't see it. We couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear it? No. Oh, um, could you read it? Was the words on there? Uh, you mean explaining it? No. Yeah, the words on the video. No, no words on the video. There were no <laughs> words on the video? Okay. If you like Akusa, you can um, put the link um, to the video in the chat. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Here you go, that way we can. Um, let me... It was Obama. Uh, yeah, I was watching a video with um, The Daily Show. The President. Absolutely. It was a good interview. I'm <laughs> <Sorry>. sure. <laughs> um, so I'll put, I'll drop the, uh, the video in the chat. It's just two minute video that's on um, Kame's website. Um, and it basically just explained everything that I, I already explained, just when you should use your, um, you should run your, run your dishwasher and your um, your washing machine in the morning or the evening and you can save money that way and it's it's free to um to opt out if you would like so that's what it said uh, and then one of the another pricing program um, is what we can what we call peak time savings and with the peak time savings program just says that in the summer months you know um, what we have is what we call peaker plants and those peaker plants can be strained a lot of times on those really, really hot days that we might have. I know it seems like every year we have a heat wave at some point where you have a few uh, over 100 days or over high 90 days. And those days the, we know that the, the grid is gonna be strained. And so what they do is they'll call you and ask you to uh, lower your energy usage between the hours of, it's usually between around two and seven. And if you do so, you don't have to, but if you do so, you can see a savings on your bill. Um, and the last time I opted into the program, um, I saved, excuse me, $25 on my bill. That might not sound like a lot. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, exactly. It is. It is. Mm. Every dollar counts. Mm. So uh, I'm done with pricing programs. If you like, you can add, put a message in the chat or ask. I'll come back around for questions. Um, but now we, I want to move on to building science. It's one of my favorite parts of of our, our program today. And the first thing I like to ask is um, where would you think our home loses the most energy? Where do we lose the most energy or what, what drains our ener the energy of our home the most when we're looking around? Plugging things in. I would say like, you mean like, like big appliances and things? That's, that's a good one. Anything else? This part is the part where I like, oh, I just want to yell it out. <laughs> And infiltration is energy drain. Air infiltra infiltration, right? Like air coming into the, the home. That's mm -hmm. a good one. That's actually so vague that it's right. Because a lot of people <laughs> will say <laughs> from your windows and your walls. And um, 
that's not correct. But air infiltration is correct because it's really um, the air that infiltrates. Why every time I push my inner? Okay, the air that infiltrates your attics and basements. That is where your energy, your, your energy, if where it comes in and where it, you lose energy in the attics and basements. And the good news is because people think it's the windows, um, they might consider replacing all the windows in their home, which can be extremely expensive. It can run you thousands and thousands of dollars, but you would only be saving your energy by 10%. But the solution is so much simpler than that. And I just wanna um, make a note that this is, I am gonna be putting a quick little survey at the end, like a link, if, if you guys would be so kind as to click on it so that our funders know that I gave you this information and that it was useful. Uh, it takes two minutes, but it does ask about three questions. And one of the questions is, um, what are the two things that, what are the two solutions to home energy loss? And the solution is air sealing and insulation. So when you air seal and insulate, um, those are very, very cost-effective um, DIY fixes that you can do on your own and you can save, do on your own and you can save um, money that way and you can also um, fix the quality of your of your home by up to 68 percent um, we do that through what we call weatherization and uh, there are two ways we weatherize and um, the one first way is through um, elevate energy we have a program that you that we run and that we we implement um, and that program is a, it's pretty much a weatherization program where a professional will come in and professionally find out what's, what the issues are in your home. And then there are DIY ways, and we'll talk about those, which are fun for me because I love the DIY channel. I love HGTV. I like to do things myself. This graphic I love because it just quickly illustrates how air flows through our home and where we're losing money and where we're losing energy. So in the summer months, the heat is coming in through the top because heat rises. It's hitting our AC and cooling system. It's telling our home that our that it's telling the system that our home is way hotter than it really is. And then is our AC is running overtime. It's running so much that it doesn't stop running. I know you can hear it running all day and all night. And that's and it's cooling your home. So it's it's working inefficiently to cool your home. And then that same air is escaping through the basement of our home or the foundation of our home because there it's not properly sealed and insulated down there. And then it's the opposite way, the air flows in the wintertime where we've got that air coming in through the basement, it's hitting our furnace and our heating system, it's telling our 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 system that our homes are way cooler than they really are. So it's working double time to keep our homes warm. So then our, our, the, where we are living spaces is too warm. And then that same heat, or we don't feel the heat because it's escaping through the attic, which is poorly insulated. And it's going straight out the, out the door. We got dollars just walking out the door. Oh, you still have the YouTube screen. You guys can't see what I'm sharing? No. Oh no, okay, hold on one second. I can see it. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, we still see Obama. Uh, oh man, I don't know. Is it is it my screen? Um, okay, let me stop sharing. Okay. There you go. All right. What I did was I paused sharing instead of stop sharing. Ah. I thought that would. Details, but, details. But I guess you gotta all oh, you gotta stop it. I gotta stop it and restart it. Okay. That's right. And tell it which screen. All right. <laughs> you guys see what I see now? Yay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So. This is the cool graphic I was just explaining. <laughs> you can see at the top, there's the AC cooling system in your, uh, in your attic, and there's the furnace in your basement, and you can see how the air is flowing. And here's a, uh, another chart. Uh, here's another chart that I really like because it shows all the, the everything actually in its place in your home, and you can see the things running. And if you look really closely, you can see the little cracks in the foundation. You can see how poor the insulation is in the attic, and you can see where the warm air is escaping into your attic and that's why your attic is always so overheated and then your basement is always so cold and your crawl space is already always so cold and you can't stand being in your basement because it's unbearably cold in the winter time 
This is what we call an uncomfortable home. What we like to say is, what we wanna do is protect our home's envelope. And if you see in that little, the insert, inserted picture, the little red line around the home, that is the envelope of our home. And we wanna protect that at all costs. We wanna make sure that envelope is sealed shut. And I like to give an example of um, when I went and visited a college campus when I was you know, in high school and visiting colleges and I stayed with this young lady and I left my high school class ring um, at her, her dorm room and I asked her to mail it to me and she mailed it to me in a regular um, you know, uh, letter size envelope. And what I received on the receiving end was the letter size envelope with a ring shaped hole in it. So somebody clearly could see that there was a ring in that envelope <laughs> and they took, I'm still not ready to laugh at it. It was over two don't blame years, me. years ago. <laughs> I'm very oh sad about it. <laughs> I love that ring. I only had it for a few months because I was a senior at the time. Mm, but, wow. uh, I, and I didn't have insurance. It was very, it was very bad. But yeah. what we want to do is make sure that we have the right envelope <laughs> for our homes. We want to make sure that we don't just put any envelope on our homes because um, we'll be losing in the long run. Another um, just a, a close up. And you can see the duct work has cracking, has cracks in it. You can see the insulation is, is so, so poor. You can see the, um, the, you can see the light is, the, the air is even coming out of your recessed lights. Um, they're even they're going, the air is coming out of the duct, is going back into your, your, your AC duct work and it's going into your attic. another um, photo, the, that little photo with the envelope. And so what's the solution? What can we do about it? So Elevate, we have a few services and uh, what we do like to say is that we have a full service approach. So what we do in the beginning is we do an assessment. We do a home energy assessment. This is not like an assessment of your home, like when you buy your home and you need, a, um, you need an assessment of your home. This is a strictly an energy assessment um, of, your, of your home. And we have an energy analyst come and conduct a free full service assessment. And we recommend practical improvements that will save you energy and water, save on your energy and your water. And then we have, we, we have guidance throughout the way. So your analyst will help you select cost effective solutions. And then they will also make sure that they, re, they get bids from qualified contractors to come in and do a BPI certified, um, uh, do the BPI certified, uh, assessment of your home, uh, then you'll receive financing. And what we say is we, we, we do financing between 70 and 100% of the cost of these services. And we, we also help you apply for grants and rebates and incentives because we're a nonprofit. We don't give out money, but we solicit the money that's needed for these home repairs for you to make sure that your home is more energy efficient. And then we have quality assurance. Then we have, uh, you know, Elevate Energy, um, has a full oversight um, of what the construction and inspection of your building um, once the work is complete. And then you'll receive annual reports showing your utility bill savings. So we'll follow up with you and let you know this is how much you're saving on your bills. This is how much energy your home is no longer losing. And um, in addition, we also give you an Energy Star certificate. And if you know Energy Star, if you have like an Energy Star appliance, you know when you see that logo you know it means that this is energy efficient you know that um, it's going to cost you money it's going to save you money in the long run so it actually adds value to your home this certificate adds value to your home is something that you can show when you go to sell your home and um it'll have value now let's talk about my favorite part which is diy weatherization uh, which is uh we're, we're at the finish line now um, so ways to manage your heating and cooling costs. So these are things that we can just do at home. They're simple, they're easy, but we might not do them. I know me, for instance, my little, um, thermostat has been saying change the filter for a couple of months and I know how easy it is. I just haven't done it. I'm about to do it. 
But if you check your furnace filter every 30 to 45 days, because a dirty filter can reduce airflow by as much as 35%. It impacts a, the impacts of a dirty filter can be overheating and heat exchangers or heating elements, and then reduces the comfort of the overall comfort of your home. And it reduces the life of your furnace or your air conditioner over time. So you will need to replace it more often. Then what you want to do is check your ductwork, um, which I showed you all those illustrations where your ductwork might have some cracks and crevices where um, you're losing energy that way. It's really simple. Just get that big sheet of um, insulation, wrap it around your ductwork and tape it up real good with that, with that gray tape and you're good to go. Also, you want to reduce your air infiltration as Mr. Taflas said. You can easily do that by buying some $5 um, Coke. They actually sell Coke at some Dollar Trees and you go around the, the door frames, your window frames, your baseboard trims, your crown molding, you just caulk everything up. You wanna do that on the inside and the outside. You wanna caulk and weather strip as necessary, repair cracks or damaged glazing, manage existing window coverings, and um, consider those little films that go on the window. I know my mom was like really big on those films. Um, and they really do add like, they really do keep your home from feeling cold and drafty. Uh, my favorite is using spray foam to seal around pipes and wires. I've actually done it myself. You get a, a bottle of spray foam, there was some holes in, because if you notice like people will come and do work on your home and they'll put a big gaping hole in your home and they just leave it there. And all of a sudden you're like, why is my home so drafty? What you can do is a really easy fix. Just get some spray foam and do it yourself. Underneath the, the um, cabinets in one of my bathroom, there was a big gaping hole and I just sprayed some foam in it and sprayed it until the, the hole was completely sealed. This is what weather stripping looks like. And then another cool thing is an outlet gasket. These cost um, cents on the dollar and you just get one of those. Um, you unscrew the plastic cap off of your um, outlet and you put the foam gasket in between because once you take the cap off, you'll see that there's a lot of holes in there. You wanna cover that up because air is escaping through those holes as well. Um, this is what typical wall installation looks like. And then this is the spray foam wall and how you could just take those, the little, the, the more sturdy foam and you can just put it in between your joists and the, um, the rim joists and you wanna just insulate that area because a lot of times you can just look up in your basement and you can see the cracks between the joists. You don't want those cracks. And then you wanna manage your water heater costs. So one of the biggest things is um, set your water heater thermostat to 120 degrees. Uh, you wanna check it for leaks and you can also only on electric water heaters, you wanna use a, um, a, an insulator jacket for your water heater. Uh, energy consumption by appliances. Sometimes I like to just make a quick mention of this. This is, you, you guys can read it. This is how much um, energy that, this is how much energy your appliances use. It's the annual, annual operating cost. So you think about that, these numbers add up. Um, they're even worse if your appliance is inefficient. So you wanna just keep, be mindful of how you're using your appliances. Somebody said plugins. This is, these are the plugins that are eating up your energy. There's another thing called a phantom load. So a lot of people go around and they switch things off, um, but some of us know that you gotta unplug it because there's still energy being released from the outlet. And we call those, um, that energy, uh, a phantom load or a vampire load. It just means it's sucking the energy out of your, um, your outlet without anything actually being operated. One of the things that you can do to control phantom loads is get a smart strip. And the cool thing about a smart strip is that it kind of identify when an, I, an item is off and it not only shuts that, 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 that item off, it will shut off the source of the energy to that item so that it's no longer um, draining your energy from your outlets. And then they also have um, outlets because there, there are little slots on there for things that need to stay on. Cause I don't know, your DVR need, you know, you need your stories to be recorded. 
you can't have your, your DVR <laughs> off for an extended amount of time. That needs to always be on. So you want to put this in the living room, put one in the kitchen, hook your refrigerator up to the, the slot that says always on, hook your dishwasher up to the always on slot. Actually, a dishwasher could go on the sometimes on because you don't use your dishwasher all the time. And it'll it'll restore power to your, your device when you're ready to start using it again. Let's talk about saving some water. There's only 1% of water is fresh in on the planet. I think everybody knows that less than 1% of water is fresh water on the planet. And we are wasting it like big time. So if we're talking about dollars and cents, we have $1. This is how your water is being used. And it's how your $1 is being broken down. Your toilet is using 28% of your water. Your laundry is using 23%. Showers and bath, 19%. Faucets, 15 cents. I said percent, but I meant cents. Faucets, 15% leaks. These leaks that you don't even know what's happening around your home, 12 cents. And your dishwasher is using three cents of that dollar. Let's talk about that toilet now. I don't know about you, but in my home, we have a, if it's brown, flush it down. If it's yellow, let it mellow rule. Because <laughs> toilets use up so much water and it is so expensive to flush you're literally flushing money down the drain when you flush your toilet just think of it that, that way and you'll be on your kids the way i'm on my kids about it so there are obvious leaks that you have that you need to go ahead and take care of but then you have what we call silent leaks and what what you want to do for a silent leak is go ahead and drop a little bit of food coloring down the the base of your toilet and then flush it. And if there's any color around the outside of your toilet, then you have a silent leak. You need to take care of that. Or you need to get some, um, I, I have uh, some little, little white, the little white tape that goes around your sinks. Um, it's not tape though, but it goes around the sinks. You can use that to also put around your toilet to keep it from leaking. Um, you want to save water indoors, especially around now. Keep your showers to under five minutes. Use little bath water. Flush your toilet only when necessary. We talked about that. Don't use it as a garbage can. Turn your water faucet off tightly. Run the dishwasher only when it's full and run the washing machine only when it's full. And then when you're outside, you want to put a turn off nozzle on the end of your hose to adjust the water flow. Um, and then when you're using a sprinkler, adjust it so it's not watering everything. It's just watering your, what? Yes, plumber's tape, thank you. <laughs> Always water in the early mornings, um, mulch around trees, shrubs, and flowers to retain moisture. I don't know why I don't know. And that is, that will conclude my presentation, but I wanna leave you with something. Um, I do do what, what I call energy house parties. And if you thought this was fun, I'm really fun in like a one-on-one -on -one setting where it's just me and your closest homeowner friends. They don't even have to have a home. They have to live in a place where they have energy and they have an energy bill um, and they wanna save money on the energy bill and they wanna hear more. And what I do for those people is I give out um, a Nest thermostat. This is a smart thermostat. So it hooks up to your, your cell phone device and then you can control your thermostat from your cell phone. A great way to save on energy, especially in a winter month. Say you're one day you get on an airplane again and you forgot to turn off your, your heat before you left, turn it off on your phone. Or you are coming back home and you don't want to, you set the timer to come on at a certain time, but let's say today you went to the grocery store. So now it's been two hours that your thermostat has been running because you said you was gonna be home at five, but you didn't get home till seven, you can turn it off with your cell phone. This runs a couple, this runs you a couple hundred dollars. And we give, I give these out for free to anybody who wants to do an energy party. And now I don't have to come to your home. We just do it just like this over the internet through Zoom. And then this is my information. Any questions? Oh, okay. There are questions. Um, yeah, it's okay to water late evenings. Let me think. I mean, you still want to follow the same rules of energy usage. So, um, like the video said, you want to, you want to, you want to use the, you want to use, 
um, your energy and water is energy uh, when the grid is not being excessively used. So early mornings, early, early to late evenings, that, those would be good. You just don't want to run your water too much during the midday. Oh yeah, okay. Um, yes, I would love to talk about community solar. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, I did not talk about it earlier. Thank you, Sylvia, for bringing it up. So community solar is, um, so, so con I'm sorry, comment. Elevate has the contract with um, Illinois to distribute solar energy. So uh, what we're doing is we are making sure that people who want to put solar panels on their home and they want to save on their energy by, by using um, a, an alternative energy source, source such as solar, uh, which is a great alternative that you can use all year round. I know there's a misconception that, you know, in the winter months, we don't get sun, but we are getting sunlight and it's, it's enough for us to run a solar panel and get our energy that way. So if you want to do that, we're helping people to sign up with um, solar companies to make sure that they are, that's an option for them and helping them through their financing processes is much cheaper than it used to be. But if you live in an apartment or maybe you don't want to, to put solar panels on your home, you don't like the look of it, for whatever case, we do have community solar. So what's happening is we're, we're building solar panels in the community that you can subscribe to. And you can subscribe to through through your comment service. And once you do, a portion of your energy will come from that alternative energy source and it will re be reflected on your comment bill. So you will save on your energy because some <laughs> of your energy is coming from the fossil fuel source, but a, a big portion of your energy is coming from the solar source. I hope that made sense. Um, the thermostats are, are great for two flats. Actually, I love doing um, we have a great multifamily program and with our multifamily program that's any building that is three units or more and a lot of times I say you know if you have a two flat if you if you have a, a finished basement then that can be considered a three flat as well um, and and um, all those what I explained earlier about having a BPI certified contractor come in and do an assessment of your home that all applies. And then obviously I can't put these in for you, but if you have somebody or there are great directions on here, but it tells you what um, are the compatible um, systems that you can install your smart thermostat with. So no, I, I oh, is there a reputable low cost energy supplier? I don't know any, I say, Nine times out of 10, you need to just stay with ComEd because ComEd has these pro pricing programs that they we have now forced them into. I'm sure they didn't want to, to uh, supply uh, consumers with a savings program, but they they have to. And they and because they were forced to do it, I think that it's the best route to go because the in, as regulated as those alternative suppliers are, they still have a lot of leeway to run a lot of nefarious programs with their consumers. So I would not trust them. I have no recommendations for alternative suppliers. <laughs> if you have an alternative supplier, I recommend you go on Cubs website and they have a, they have an extensive list of every single um, alternative supplier that, that is operating in Illinois, how much they charge, when their rates will go up, and how much it costs to get off of that that plan. So if you thought you you had an alter, a great alternative supplier and they gave you a great rate, you can go on there and see if and when those rates are subject to change. That was the last question. Says one more now. Um, so if you when power is up, because I'm gonna get adjustments from comment. Uh, oh, I did want to talk about that. Thank you, Taft. Um, oh. so there are some people who have energy shutoffs. So we recently found out that comment was shutting people's energy off in the middle of a global pandemic during the winter in Chicago. Right. which is unfathomable 
if that has happened to you or anyone you know, you can call ComEd and they have to cut your energy back on. They have to cut your, your, your utilities back on, whether or not you can pay. Uh, if you want to know about the, the community so, um, solar, it's actually being run through the, uh, the, um, the different solar companies that are, there are, there are solar companies that are regulated through Illinois, um, and then there are some other ones. So I would say go on to Illinois Solar for All, their website, illinoissolarforall.com and sign up for their mailing list, but also on their website, you can go and see what, um, what solar companies are reputable. And you can go down that list and you have to call one of those companies and they'll let you know when solar um, community solar will be available in your community. Uh, 2021 has put, a, I mean, 2020 put a, a, little, a few things on pause but um, community solar is still coming, it's still on the way. Thank you all for having me. Um, and, oh, actually, let me drop in the chat. Okay, first of all, let me stop sharing so we can all see each other. Let me drop in the chat. <laughs> um, I, I'm just gonna drop in the chat really quickly, guys. It's, uh, uh, first I wanna apologize for you having to see my um, all my YouTube searches. I, that is what I was trying to avoid. Love that hat, Sylvia. <laughs> um, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Tiffany's hiding behind her um, her uh, studio uh, picture there. So in the chat, I'm just gonna put in. Uh, <laughs> I gotta put in the <laughs> the link. Um, if you wanna just <laughs> click on that link before we shut this all down and it'll open up in another window. It'll take you to the Elevate Energy website and it'll go straight to this event. Okay. And you just answer the few questions and put your information in. And that's where you can say whether or not you wanna have an energy party with me at any point or where I can, you can put in your, your information and it'll get back to me and I'll be able to see like who you are and whether or not you wanna be contacted through email or um, phone number. That'll be there as well. I don't see it. The link? Oh, there it is. No, I do. Okay. Should be a, just a few questions. No, that's from C. That's from CCLF. I don't see yours. Oh no. I don't. Uh, oh, you know what? It went directly to one person. Okay, let me see. See, uh, let me put it on to everyone. Probably went to Tiffany. <laughs> it went to Pamela. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. All right. All right, the link is there now. All righty. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again for having me. I love doing these for you guys. Yeah. I hope to see you in the new year doing more. Okay, absolutely. Yes, everyone stay safe. Enjoy the holidays, mask up and- Definitely. And save that energy. Yes, yes please. Let's, let's reduce our carbon footprint. Absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. All right, Thank thanks you. a lot. We'll have you back. All right. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Take care. Take care. Happy holidays. Right. Happy holidays to you, too. Happy holidays. Thank so, you. Stay safe. Good job, Pam, as always. Oh, thank you. That's an excellent run of show. I just clicked on the Calvin and said, hey, we're, we're doing an energy thing in a pandemic. He clicked, he clicked back with his like an applause. I told him I'm not going to bother you anymore because I don't want you to bother.